And next we have Joe Cusack. So Joe is a 20 year market veteran and currently serves as the VP of Wealth and Asset Management at Moneyblock, an independent broker slash dealer. Uh, they're the member of FINRA, NFA, SIPC. And today Joe is gonna be showing us how to understand probability to improve profitability. And guys, before I give it over to Joe, I just wanna say one thing real quick. Do not leave if you wanna keep your seat. We are approaching maximum capacity and if you leave, you will not be able to get back in, all right? Just want to say that. Do not leave if you want to keep your seat. And uh, that's about it. Joe, it's all yours. Hey, Kevin, thanks a lot. Uh, if I could just get everybody in the room to see, say, well, you probably just saw my family and me, uh, but you should be seeing the first slide of today's presentation and how we're going to use uh, probabilities to build and manage your own long short fund couldn't be more of a pertinent subject, but if I could just get in that chat box over there uh, or in the questions area, I don't care which one you use, um, but if you can just type in there that yes, you can hear me, that would be awesome. Kevin, you seeing everything? All right, great. Yep, I got everybody saying yes. All right, guys, I want to welcome everybody to today's presentation. Uh, I enjoyed the previous presentation. It really shows the power of and leverage of the options product. Uh, yeah. My name, as Kevin said, is Joe Cusick. I'm the VP of Wealth and Asset Management here at MoneyBlock. The various strategies that you're going to be listening to today, plus the one that I'm discussing today, are strategies that I utilize not only independently as a trader and investor, but also as a money manager, as an advisor. And here at MoneyBlock, we do offer the ability uh, for you to come in and work with advisors like myself. And if anybody does want to talk to me directly, you can just email me at support at moneyblock.com. If you're looking for a new home, uh, if you're looking for uh, an area where you can trade these various strategies uh, that we're talking about today and ones that you're going to be learning about over the course of the days, weeks, months, and years, um, check out Trading Block. It's a great opportunity to do that in a great environment, and we're actually doing some really robust new things with the platform coming up soon over the next couple quarters that it's going to make it second to none as far as experience. I'd also be remiss to say, not mention our other partner that's involved with today's presentation, and that's TradeSpoon. Uh, TradeSpoon is run and founded by Vlad Karpel, who is also going to join me on the webinar today. And uh, Trade and, and Vlad is also an employee of AOS Inc., which does business as Trading Block and Money Block, a registered broker dealer, FINRA, NFA, CIPIC member, and a registered investment advisor. TradeSpoon and AOS are not affiliated companies, and the content contained in TradeSpoon is not endorsed by AOS. AOS has an advertising and marketing arrangement with parties that are not registered or regulated as broker-dealers, such as TradeSpoon. And as part of these arrangements, AOS may pay fees to provide or other fees to provide forms of other forms of compensation in exchange for marketing. That is a mouthful. Uh, here's mine. Options involved risk may not be suitable for all investors. Please read the characteristics and risks of standardized options. Uh, you can go to the optionsclearingcorp.com website or you can go to our moneyblock.com or tradingblock.com website and you can access a copy of that document as well. You can also call us at our aid number, owner number. I just want to make it abundantly clear. Any stock, option, or future symbol that I'm going to talk about today are displayed only for illustrative purposes only and are not intended to portray a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold any particular security, derivative, or whatnot. <clears throat> Again, I want to thank Kevin and team uh, and everybody on today for our presentation. This is actually a presentation that I've done for institutional and retail communities, but it couldn't come at a more appropriate time. And it's talking about how we have now walked into a world where the, the, the law of probability is really in the forefront. Um, our previous speaker was talking about trading, you know, basically out of the money options that give you a little bit more time. I like the fact that they incorporated the fact that you're buying some time because then it gives you the time to be right. The less time you have with an option, the less time you have to be right, the lower the probability. And that's where a lot of the shortfalls come with the individual traders and investors is, is that they don't give themselves enough time and they're not using probabilities to really line up the trade so that they're doing not only the best strategy, but also the strategy with the best probability to potentially make profit. Now, when I was thinking about this, and as a matter of fact, I'm sitting down with a lot of uh, money managers, uh, advisors, hedge funds, and talking about this various strategies. As a matter of fact, in this low implied volatility market, 
there's a lot of individuals that are starting to gear towards these strategies that we're going to talk about today um, as far as how they're trading in the market because they're frustrated, especially those that are bearish, those that uh, have a difficult time trading in low implied volatility volatile markets. And this is a great opportunity to take a look at uh, how you can take control. Now, I got this from Investopedia. Uh, not that I use it often, but uh, I wanted to find out what a definition of a long short fund is. And I'm going to read it real quick. It's a type of mutual fund that mimics uh, some of the trading strategies typically employed by a hedge fund. Unlike most mutual funds, long short funds use leverage, derivatives, and short positions to an attempt to maximize total returns regardless of market conditions. The amount of leverage used and the number of derivatives and short positions that are long short funds that are in long short funds may contain are limited by law. These funds invest primarily in stocks. All I read in this, and I'm looking at Vlad right now and he's scratching his head just like really? All I see in this, I don't know about you guys, but I see fees, fees, and more fees. Basically what you're doing is, is you're paying someone anywhere from 250 points, which is 2.5%, to up to 6%. There are fees beyond what you see on the upfront fee that you get because of executions, because of roles, because of whatever it is. At the end of the day, what I'm going to show you is, is the ability to do just what these fund managers are but you're not going to have the limitations that typically uh, occur when you are trying to get into something like this. What do I mean? Well, first of all, for those of you that have accounts like IRAs or um, limited partnerships or trusts, you may not be able to go into these types of long short funds. Also, for those of you that are online today, you may not have a hundred grand, uh, which means that these funds aren't going to talk to you. The other thing is, is you may not be a qualified investor. You may not have meet the requirements of having, uh, you know, a, a net worth of over a million dollars, or you know, making two hundred thousand every year. So at the end of the day, this gives you an opportunity to structure your own portfolio, and you're going to do it in a prudent, conservative manner, and you're going to be using options. And the biggest thing that I can say about today is, is that you're going to see how you use probabilities. Um, you're going to use things like volatility, and most importantly, you're just going to be able to use the most optimal strategy in in this in in the appropriate environment to do this. And everybody on this webinar is going to be able to do this. Now, what's the biggest stumbling block when we're trying to figure out what we're going to do or how to construct this? Well, it comes down to ideas, and I am fortunate enough to have the guy who is the founder of Tradespoon sitting next to me. And I wanted him to give you a little bit of idea of where you can go to to get the genesis of some ideas so that when we are talking about the strategies today that I'm going to pull out for you, you're going to have a place to go to uh, check out these ideas. So I just want to quickly bring in Vlad. Vlad, are you on right now? Let's go. Thank you. And yes, uh, a trade spoon, we do just that. We believe in value investing. And we're looking at what are the best stocks to trade which stocks long term, one year horizon has a fundamentally strong uh, basis and technical basis. And we, the, so the first problem is which stocks to buy. The second problem we try to resolve is the timing. At what point do you enter position and at what point do you exit the position? And if you can see on the screen, we basically have two values. Long term rating, this is based on our equity analyst research. We have a team of analysts that sift through the stocks that have underlying options. And based on the fundamental data, earnings, uh, discounted cash flow, institutional ownership, and technical analysis, the one-year outlook, it assigns a value. And 10 means very, we're very strong, we have a strong bullish bias on these stocks. And then the short term, we build a model with the predictive analytics that looks, that try to forecast where the stock is going to be in the next 50 days. You can see on the screen where it says time horizon 50 days, our quant models that look at the previous data and look at the technical data and look at the long term ratings, basically trying to predict is stock going to be higher in the next 50 days or stock is going to be lower in 50 days. And every day we run this algorithm and we give you top 50 stocks. And based on this data, we can construct option strategy that Joe will discuss shortly that will allow you to maximize that uh, knowledge and be, be able to capitalize on that. We will look at the probability of stock being successful and where it's going to be higher in the next 50 days and we will look at what is the 
optimal return on the capital versus the probability of success. Yeah, and that's perfect, folks. I mean, right now, I'm telling you, right, uh, utilize, having this asset here uh, is going to get you so that now you can structure your fund. So what do I mean by structure your fund? Well, it's not only having those underlyings that you can use and having the some sort of analysis that you're doing to get those uh, those underlyings um, in a watch list. We'll get into that in a second. Um, but we have limited capital, most of us, on this particular webinar. We may not be able to have naked shorts in our accounts, like if you had an IRA or something of that nature, or you just may not have the capital required. So what are we going to do? Well, first and foremost, I'm going to use leaps, uh, longer term options that have anywhere from 9, 12 to 24 months until they expire. And I'm going to leap, use leap calls and puts as proxies. In other words, long calls, long puts um, as proxies for the stock. Now, the biggest thing that we need to do, and, and, and I'm just going to take a step back here. You need to execute a position, right, with defined risk. We have defined amount of risk capital, right, in our accounts. So we need to execute a defined risk strategy. The other thing is, is that when you're entering into that strategy, you need to be getting in at a lower cost basis than a prevailing market. Now, that may seem crazy. What is he talking about? Basically, what I'm talking about is, and I'm sorry, I'm having an issue with uh, a pop-up that keeps coming up so okay great thanks guys um, you need to get in when I'm entering into these strategies I need to get in a lower cost basis in the prevailing market which means that if I'm gonna buy a stock how do you get in at a lower cost basis well someone could uh, a manager could say well we could look at dividend paying stocks and that dividend amount is going to uh, reduce our cost basis over the course of time. I take that as an answer. If I'm buying an option, the only way that I know how you can do it is if you're selling another option against it. And the bottom line is, is that because you have things like time and volatility always working against you, your job, first and foremost, as a, a portfolio and money manager and as a trader, is to mitigate that risk in your portfolio. Mitigate the amount of risk capital that you have out in that marketplace. All right, so we're also going to do that when we're structuring our fund. You need to have less than, I say, one and a half to three percent. If you have smaller accounts, do not go over five percent in any one position as far as your total portfolio risk in that one position. Finally, you need to execute the highest probability trade. This is a probabilistic uh, market. You are going to hear these terms of probability of profit, probability of touch, probability of expiring. Folks, you never thought the world of statistics past uh, high school or maybe in university would ever come back to you, but guess what it is, and that's because we have the tools and applications that do those calculations quickly and easy, and the best part is, is it gives you that transparency. So what's the first thing we do? We need to figure out what we're going to trade. So you need to develop a watch list of underlying securities that have a fit and have a 50-day and a one to five-year directional bias, okay? and you know, as Vlad said, they offer uh, the ability to build out those different types of watch lists. They're using their proprietary analysis. We have tools and applications that, based on certain criteria, you can actually get a list of stocks, uh, whether it's stocks that have moved outside of their 52 week range, uh, high, low volatility, whatever it is, there are tools and applications. The biggest thing that you can do, though, is get a list of uh, bullish and bearish uh, names that you can utilize. Uh, for potentially setting up your portfolio. And after I walk through these two, um, these two strategies that we're going to talk about today and use all the components that we have in front of us, you're going to see that this is actually something that's very feasible. And ladies and gentlemen, while it, it is engaging and it's exciting about trading weeklies and, and uh, event-driven type strategies, it is a very tough way to make a living, and it, it, even more important, it's an, it could become an inconsistent way of developing long-term growth as far as your portfolio. But if we actually if we actually go through this exercise, you're going to see. So I have a list of bullish uh, ideas right here. And one of them that I'm going to pull off is SanDisk. Now, again, like I said, this is not deemed as a recommendation. I just pulled it off. 
And now SanDisk, it's currently trading at 103.46. So first and foremost is this is a hundred dollar stock. And to think about that, um, if I'm going to trade an asset, I want to be able to do some option strategies around it, just in case either I have to generate income. Uh, I have to start adding protection, whatever it is that you deem necessary, but I need the versatility. And the only way that I can trade options around this particular strategy, especially when you're talking about stocks, is if you, are, you have 100 shares. Remember, one option contract is equal to the right to own or be short, right, uh, up to uh, 100 shares. So if I bought 100 shares of this particular underlying right now, that would cost me 10 grand. Well, that's out of the question. Right? So that this gets into the whole leverage component. But remember, I want to do something that has a high probability. I have a risk tolerance that's somewhat conservative. Uh, and remember, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to do what I've been paying somebody anywhere from 25 to 6% to do for me, which is build up a high-quality portfolio of stocks right? that's going to generate uh, – you know, a rate of return that's going to be better than what I would get in a prevailing uh, market ETF like, or, or a market index like the S&P 500, the NASDAQ. So how do you do that? Well, I'm looking at NASDAQ. That's actually in the tech sector. <clears throat> Excuse me. 103.46 is the price. The IV rank, the IV percentile is at 77%. Why is that important? Well, <clears throat> it's important. Excuse me. I got to hold on. Sorry, guys, I didn't want to cough in your speakers. Um, the IV rank or IV percentile, it's something that I've talked about since, you know, I've been doing this for over a decade uh, publicly. Um, and the bottom line is, is that that's where you take the 52-week high and low, right? And based, or excuse me, the 52-week low, look at the current volatility. So last volatility is at 36. The low is at 22. So that basically is basically about 14 um, points higher. That's in the 77th percentile. That means that right now the IV, the implied volatility, is 77% higher um, than its 52-week low. Now, that doesn't mean that necessarily I'm just going to go out, oh, it's a, it's a premium selling opportunity because, as you've seen, even when vol is high, it's not directionally biased. The market's kept going up. Okay. So at the end of the day, what I do is when I see that IV rank, I know two things right off the bat. One is, is that if I'm buying options, I'm probably going to be paying a little bit more. But also, I'm going to be selling options. I'm going to receive more. And it's going to give me the ability when I see a higher IV rank, right? It's going to give me the ability to sell something that's further out of the money, which is giving me a lower probability that that option that I'm selling will not be uh, working against me. I remember, I'm using that as a cost basis reduction. I'm using that as something that's going to get me in better than the prevailing market. It also gives me another indication that there's some sort of binary event. And what I mean by binary event is earnings. As a matter of fact, I looked it up and it's on 716. So it's within the July and it could potentially impact any August options that you're going to get into. And that's important to understand. So not only knowing that the IV percentile is a little bit high and rich, based on where vol has been over the last 52 weeks. It's also pointed out that I needed to look and do a little research, boom, found earnings. So my long-term and short-term sentiment is bullish, okay? And I say long-term and short-term because in the short-term, especially with an event like earnings, that can move a stock very violently for a short period of time, but it will eventually mean revert. So what do I do? Well, I want to look at how much the market's pricing in. See how I didn't just jump into a strategy or start to show graphics about, you know, if I bought this and sold that, this is how much I could make, and then all of a sudden you see it play out. That's not what I do. I look at that forward-looking component because this is what charts don't do, folks. While it gives you a good vision of what's happened, it doesn't give you a forecast of what's going forward. Now, you could use technical indicators to kind of give you a feel like Bollinger Bands. Bollinger Bands are basically just looking at like um, standard deviations and vol uh, really is what it does. And the bottom line is, is that what I want to do is I want to see what is the options marketplace forecasting for potential movement in the underlying. And I look at a one-day, a seven-day, and a 30-day. And Now, this is just a quick little check. It gives me a one standard deviation move uh, calculation for these time frames, right? And that's what the market's pricing in. So what do I do? I take the stock price. I multiply it times the current implied volatility, 
right, which is a decimal, and then I divide it by the square root of time. In this, in this case, this is square root of 252. There's uh, this is square root of 52 weeks, and this is square root of 12 months, right? And this is telling me how much the marketplace, as of today, with one standard deviation, uh, a one standard deviation move would be in this underlying. That's what's being priced in there for one day, seven days, and 30 days. This is helpful on two fronts. One is, is because I know the IV rank is high. It's telling me how much exactly they're pricing in for potential movement. Now, does it have to? No. Like, as a matter of fact, if you would have looked at Nike last night before earnings, I priced out Nike having the potential to move $3 going into that earnings announcement. This morning, it moved $1.60. All right? So with that being said, it doesn't mean that it has to move move that amount. It just means that's what the marketplace, specifically the options marketplace, is pricing in. Second of all, this helps me a lot when I'm trying to look at initial um, strike price selection. Because the one challenge that I have, especially when I'm buying and selling options with this particular strategy, I'm buying options that are going to be deeper in money, and I'm selling options that are going to be out of the money. And specifically, I'm looking at the options I'm selling because that have a shorter time period, uh, time frame until they expire. That means I'm going to have to manage that trade more than I would the longer-term option. That will become abundantly clear in a, in a couple slides. But the point being is, is that this gives me an idea that over the next 30 days, if I did a July or an August option, I have the potential for the stock to move potentially either up or down, either uh, um, a net amount or, or in directionally about 10 bucks. Right, so that means that if I'm selling the 90 or the $100 calls, or if I'm buying the 110 calls, there's potential, you know, that it that that's being priced into the range. So I want to stay aware of that. And if I'm going to trade either one of those, I want to make sure that I'm doing favorable prices to take on that risk. Another point about this calculation is is that it is dynamic. So this isn't law. Once the market changes price. If implied volatility changes, so for example, after earnings are announced or going into earnings, volatility might come off. It might normalize and come back norm more into that moderate range, um, revert to the mean as you've heard in, in previous webinars. Um, that means that this calculation will change. It's just a nice guidepost. And last, it is not directionally biased, folks. It doesn't tell me that I'm going to move up this much or down that much. It's just what the marketplace is pricing in. Now I look at the approach. Now traditional money managers would have to construct the portfolio with just using long stock for this particular part of a long stock portfolio. That means I would have to go in and buy a certain amount of shares that fit to a proprietary model. In this case, uh, for example, Every one of these, every one of the positions in this particular case, you're buying roughly right around 90 to almost 100 shares uh, for that particular position. That means that you're going to put a ton of cash outlay out there. Plus, the the other thing is is that you're getting in it at the prevailing market price. You're not getting in any better. Um, and if you're not getting it, if you don't get any better on the prevailing market price, you're also basically looking at having a ton of risk capital in this case. So how do we mitigate that? Right. Well, because we have limited capital, we're going to use options, right? And because we're going to be buying options, we know that we want to get in at the lower prevailing market price of that option that we're buying. So we're going to need to sell something against it. And net net, we want to have a probability of better than 50% because when you buy or sell a stock, you just have a 50-50 probability that it will go up or down. In this case, when we're looking at strategies like what we're about to discuss, this particular strategy. Um, which is referred to as a diagonal, we want to have at least somewhere between a 65 and 70 percent probability that it's going to have some sort of profit at expiration. Now what is probability of any profit? Well the probability for any trade to achieve break even or better is how I look at it. That's how I've explained it um, for the last six years since we've had tools out there that calculate probability of profit or uh, probability in general. Um, and folks, if you can break even or better, <clears throat> you're going to be successful because that means you have a very disciplined, high probabilistic pro, uh, 
approach and and again you're going to find that you're going to make uh, less errors than you have in the past so let's take a look at the structure and the math of the trade so now it's going to really put the the context around what we're trying to achieve so remember um, initially I said I was bullish on Sandus um, and you know you could again the we're not going through the technical analysis components I use light technical analysis personally um, you know just look at a chart take a look at what's going on uh, I use things like IV rank I use things like probabilities uh, and so forth that really help me um, determine uh, what's going on with the market and then I know from my experience what are the most optimal strategies uh, based on that my assessment of market uh, of underlying volatility and my underlying sentiment as far as bullishness or bearishness now in this particular case I'm going to be buying the January of uh, 2015 95 calls those have over 200 days until they expire as a matter of fact when I started looking at that that was exactly what it was um, it's trading at fourteen dollars and thirty cents or fourteen hundred and thirty dollars per contract this means that it gives me the right to own stock at a, a price of ninety five dollars or better and that's a hundred shares so if I were to exercise that I'd have a hundred shares at ninety five now my break-even point is going to be fourteen dollars higher so you got to keep that in mind when you're trading this stuff um, because um, <clears throat> excuse me um, because that's really the threshold over the course of time that you want to diminish you want to take out that remaining premium but this option right now with stock trading at 103.38 this is eight dollars and thirty cents in the money so that means that if the stock were to stay at 103.38 between now and expiration hey guess what this option is still worth 830 all right so now you know basically you have about five dollars of premium that you have to write down between now and expiration if this stock doesn't move if it starts to grind up higher you're gonna take advantage of that so remember how I mentioned we want to get into the market at a lower cost basis than the prevailing market price so if I buy these $95 calls I don't want to pay 1430 I'm actually gonna pay 1316 all right so I'm buying these calls for thirteen dollars and sixteen thirteen dollars and sixteen cents or thirteen hundred sixty dollars I've reduced my cost basis by 114 bucks or a dollar 14 that's the premium I'm receiving right for the 115 calls some of you have heard this is a poor man's covered call I don't like that term this is a diagonal but the goal here is twofold the strike selection that I chose is roughly one standard deviation out of the money in other words it only has about a 20 percent probability of being in the money expiration that's very important that means I have an 80% probability that it's going to go out worthless. It does mean, too, that there's about a 40% probability that could potentially touch this price between now and August expiration. That means that I could recognize if it does go between now and July, uh, or excuse me, in the end of June, uh, by August, uh, the third week in August, if it goes to 115, um, I could have a $1,000 profit. So you see the return on capital in just this particular position over the next 50 days could be about 76 percent if you also look at it in your overall portfolio right which is how I look at it two things occur here this 114 if I have seven or eight of these positions on that I'm taking in at least um, somewhere between 35 cents and a dollar it's always going to be dependent upon where the underlying trading where vol is but the goal is is that the premium I receive from the options I'm selling I look at the total portfolio net lick and I want to take in at least one and a half to three percent and that would be ambitious at best to take three percent of the total short premium in against my portfolio right I'm not looking at this return I'm looking at what how much first of all it reduces my cost basis here and if the market did nothing if it just started to start to grind right here and all those names kind of stayed in a really tight range I want to take in at least one to uh, three percent of total uh, premium decay for that month if you annualize that folks if you're taking in that much premium every month right yes you're writing it against this option specifically but if you do that on all 7 12 or 20 positions or how many you have and I typically have not been over 20 25 it's just it is a lot to manage I typically stay around that uh, 10 to 15 positions uh, but I could get up there when the opportunity does arise 
but the point being is, is that I know that on the total portfolio capital, when I look at how much capital I have in my portfolio, I'm taking in at least one to three percent every month of just um, decay, short option premium against my portfolio. Um, why is that important? Because if you analyze that, that could be anywhere from an extra 12 to 17 uh, percent or maybe even a little bit more, but again, like I said, that's ambitious. Uh, but that's important because you've created now a dividend stream that did not exist. It lowers your cost basis. And if your portfolio starts to drift, and I don't like to have a drift to the downside as far as my portfolio swings, I don't want to have a downside drift in any one month more than roughly around 4 to 6%. That's what my goal is. Now, obviously, you cannot control the markets, right? You trade them. But that's how we try to position it, so that's what we're looking at. And again, when you're looking at this construction, the option I'm buying, it roughly has somewhere between a 70 and 80 delta, and the option I'm selling has about a 20 delta. And I'm just I'm going to reiterate these points. Finally, you look at probability. You look at probability of expiring, probability of touching certain points, price points, and the probability of profit at expiry of the short option. All right. And the reason why I look at that is because, first and foremost, uh, I look at these because then I start to formulate before I even click the trade button, what do I do if the market goes up, in this case, dramatically and gets into this area? Right? We'll walk through that scenario. What's the probability of it going below my break-even point uh, by the expiration of the short option? Right? Because once it goes below that point, right, and then I have to look at the untested side, which is that short call I sold in August. I have to think, do I roll it to September? Do I roll it down, right? Has the, 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 while the market sentiment is still, I'm still in this case bullish, has the short term market sentiment changed so that I should be rolling down and taking a more premium on that particular month? So on and so forth. Um, the ob also the opportunity to take a profit. What's the probability of it expiring above that short option or even touching, right? I'm managing that and I'm thinking about that before. So this is the maintenance components. And when you're thinking of maintenance, most people are like, well, when do I take profits and when do I cut losses? For this particular strategy, my goal is to get bare minimum at least two rolls in. In other words, I want to have at least two months where I take in premium. Now, if I get a month, and this actually happened to me in May, where I had two positions where it went way through the short strike price. The, the market just took off in two underlyings. Um, one of them was Micron and, and the other one was URI. But the point being is, is at that stage, they were so far above the um, short option that I sold, and it happened in basically about three and a half weeks. Um, what I did was is I just took off the trade, took the profit. And I looked, and then I'll keep it on the radar screen because I still have long-term uh, bullish sentiment, but I took it off because I didn't want to roll to the next month. It, the roll wasn't paying well enough. I couldn't get the amount of premium that I wanted on the roll, so it might have turned into a self-defeating prophecy. Also, those two stocks were reporting earnings going into this month in July, so I also saw that there was a binary event that could um, negatively impact the stock, and when I saw that I had, in one, I had a 50% return on the capital that I had vested um, and about it would it uh, actually was about two percent return on the portfolio, and I had another one that was about a thirty percent return on the risk capital, and about a little less, right around one percent. So that was three percent of total portfolio profits that I could lock in. Um, that's what I pulled. So uh, you can see my second bullet point. The other thing is is that well, let's say that the stock didn't run through. Well, I start looking at rolls fifteen days or less to expiration. The reason why is, is because there's really virtually no time premium left. In other words, if it has a delta of less than right around 5%, or if it has a bid ask of no bid at like a nickel or no bid at 10 cents, you need to look to roll to the next expiration month. And the options that you're going to be selling are roughly going to have roughly around a 20 delta. Now, the reason why I'm giving you delta points at this juncture is twofold. One is, is some of you might not have the tools. Um, where you have IV rank, where you have um, you know probability uh, uh, of profit or probability of touch. So basically, uh, I'm saying 20 delta because that's basically about one standard deviation out of the money. That basically is giving you about uh, anywhere between 16 
to 20% uh, uh, probability that it could be in money or basically about an 80 to 84% probability that that option you're selling is going to go out worthless. Okay, So it gives me that upside potential in the case of this long call. And as I said before, if the stock goes through that short strike and it happens in a very short period of time, look to potentially take profits, um, especially if you can't get a roll where it's going to pay um, you, you know where you are getting a credit that's going to reduce your cost basis. If you have to roll for a debit and you have a positive return, take it off. Especially if you can add a portfolio uh, return of one to three percent in one month or two percent in one month on a particular position, go for it. Now, if the stock is dropped uh, precipitously, in other words, it's just dropped out. First and foremost, consider shutting the position down. Just get out of the whole strategy. Stocks can change in their directional bias. Yes, we do all the research. Yes, you can use proprietary algorithms or whatnot. But at the end of the day, if something material has ha occurred that has changed the overall both short-term and long-term sentiment of the stock, especially from a long-term perspective, uh, perspective, if the mechanics have broke down and you bottom line see that, you know that, your job is to preserve that capital. Remember, probability of being profitable or being profitable is doing break even or better. I don't know why that's in there. Sorry. Oh yeah. And again, when you're trying to find ideas, uh, Vlad can talk more about it at the end. Um, but you can utilize their service uh, to find ideas. Once you've found those ideas, you need to put a watch list together. A watch list. Now we're going to look at the short side of the market now. A watch list that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to look at a watch list of underlines that have at least at least 20 to 50 names in it. It's going to be hard to keep track of all those uh, and unless you have uh, some sort of keen eye or you followed certain ones. So that's why I don't. Uh, I actually. Uh, don't have a problem with people using certain types of services or tools and applications that give you some sort of scoring methodology, right? So that you can start to develop a 50 to a one, 50 day to a one to five year directional bias. And these are ones that I'm looking at uh, that are potentially uh, bearish and actually one uh, CIT group. Now, uh, full disclosure, uh, my clients and and uh, do have a position on this. I put it on a long time ago, and I forgot about it. Uh, from the perspective when I put this together, uh, I'll be in full disclosure that there there is a position on for my clients. So, with that being said, I'm looking at CIT. Uh, the price when I was looking at this was at 45.06. I think it's a little higher today. Um, there is actually a misprint here. The vol percentile or the vol rank is uh, basically at 77. Um, and that's because the last vol is at 17% and the low, the 52-week low, is at 10%. Now, the reason why it's so much higher, again, I found a binary event. Now, what are binary events? I, I want to reiterate, it's not just earnings. It could be a... using weeklies. That's where, and I would only be buying weeklies at that point, um, and those weekly options that have seven days or less, because you have so little time, those are just pure delta and vega plays. I mean, delta and, uh, yeah, um, and, and, and the bottom line is, is that uh, you can use those into binary events, but that's not what we're talking about today. So your long-term and short-term sentiment is you got to be bearish, okay? So what do I do? Again, and I want to give a very strict logic chain. What I do on the bullish side, I do on the bear side as far as how I follow through the, these steps. And at the end of the day, what I do is I look at what the options are telling me. How much is the options marketplace telling me how much this could potentially move? One, seven, and 30 days. Remember, folks, this is a dynamic calculation, and it's not directionally biased. So keep that in mind when you're utilizing these calculations. Or if you see, oh, this is the estimated move calculation, it's dynamic. It will change. Most of us on this webinar are not going to go naked short stock. I don't care if it's one share, 100 shares, or 1,000 shares. A, it's too expensive. It's prohibitive. B, it, it has unlimited risk upside. And C, it, it's not a very versatile position, right? 
you it, it, you have a 50-50 probability that's going to go up or down. I want to structure something that has at least a 65 to 70 percent probability of me being potentially profitable. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to address that by the limitation of trading capital, the need to get my cost basis lower than the prevailing market, and I need to have that probability higher than 50 percent. Otherwise, I just go out and short the stock. And again, well, how do I define probability of profit? Basically, break even or better. So let's look at the structure of a, a, a bearish or a short position in this. And like I said, I've been talking to a lot of advisors, uh, a lot of high net worth individuals, retail for a decade about utilizing these strategies. So this isn't something new, but it is something that there's nuances like probabilities, like IV ranks, things that we've been putting out there that now help people structure this. In the environment right now with low implied volatility and the trend that has as, as, as robust as it's been, I mean, geez, I don't think we've had a downtick, it feels like, for almost two months. But the point being is, is that you can structure a portfolio very conservatively, both long, short, and the beautiful part is, is that your general sentiment has time to be right. All right? So let's take a look at how we structure a short trade. So I'm buying the January 50 puts that expire in 2015. I'm paying $6.15. I'm going to sell the August $43 puts. Now, there's... Uh, one thing about the puts that I'm two things that I'm going to talk about. One I've mentioned, the other one I haven't. Uh, about the option I'm selling. One is is that it's roughly about one standard deviation out of the money. It's not exact. The standard deviation would be about forty-two uh, dollars on the stock. The reason why I'm harping on this is because I want to have at least a, a twenty percent. That's why I said if you're looking at the delta of this option, the August forty-three puts, it's going to have a twenty delta. All right, and I'm receiving 37 cents. That's my cost basis reduction. That gets me in lower than it gets me short, or into these puts specifically at a lower cost basis than what the prevailing market is is giving me. Um, you know, there are no dividends, there are no other offsets, whether you're using calls or puts, unless you're going to sell some premium against it. It also improves my uh, my uh, return on capital uh, because I don't have such a big threshold. Uh, to get through to start seeing that I'm going to have a nice rate of return if this does start to go directionally my way. All right, so I have $578 in risk per contract. Um, I don't look at the return on investment or the return on capital at this juncture because I know that I want to get at least one or two rolls. But if I do, the biggest thing that I can say is, is that, yes, my ultimate point of profit between now and August is at the $43 strike. If it reaches there and goes through there dramatically, what am I thinking? Right? Well, we'll go through that, but you're going to pull it off. I know that this mark here and this profit on this one lot is going to give me almost a 1% return on the uh, capital I have in my account. Right? It's, it's basically, if, uh, let's say I had 25 grand in my account. Now, for those of you that have smaller accounts, you could still do this. If you have five, ten, fifteen thousand, um, five hundred dollars, you know that you're going to be struggling with this. Um, it, it's just not feasible. Even two thousand. Right, you're going to have one or two positions on. It's going to be very difficult, but this conservative approach, if you're taking a high probability uh, underlyings and taking these high probability types of setups um, that give you time, uh, you're going to see that you can actually work through this, and you're going to be a premium seller, and you're going to be long. You're working your long-term sentiment, and you're reducing your cost basis. You're doing what every manager out there should be doing when they're managing your portfolio. Okay, And again, I look at the probability of expiring, touching, and the probability of profit. And my probability of profit is always going to be the way I set this up is basically around 65 to 70%. Now, some of you are like, well, what happens if I don't have these cool uh, calculators? We're going to be coming out with a more enhanced calculator. But if you don't have one, the probability of touch basically is about uh, two, two times the probability of expiring. If you don't have the... Um, if you don't have the probability of expiring, you can pro you can utilize your delta as a rudimentary at the time of the trade as a rudimentary uh, tool to say, you know what, if it has a 20 delta, uh, I have a 20% uh, probability of this option being in the money at expiration. That means that there's roughly about a 40% probability, plus or minus, of it touching between now and expiration. 
Now remember, that is dynamic. If the stock starts to move up or down, what happens to that delta? That changes. Your probabilities will change too, folks. All right. So at the end of the day, you could see that I'm setting up a trade that you know has a 65% probability of being potentially profitable. I have a trade where it only has roughly around a 16 to 20% probability of it even touching the upper end of this strike between for the next 50 days, right? And it only has an 8% probability of of finishing above that strike price, which is also an important point. That's why I'm selling this option. I have such a small probability that it's going to expire above uh, or, or below. In this case, I have a 41% probability of it being below, right? It's still less than 50-50, uh, so it's better than shorting the stock outright. Um, and I know this is my break-even point, right, on the whole strategy if the stock goes down to 44.63. So, uh, and I also know that I have an 82% probability that it could potentially touch, or in other words, touch this point where I'd be break even or better. And the quicker that happens, I could actually say, you know what, uh, the market sentiment has changed. I see an opportunity to take this off for a potential profit. You can. Again, you are the risk manager. Um, typically, uh, uh, another rule of thumb when I'm looking at short options too, I should add this to the maintenance of the position. You can look the role of the option. I'm going to actually add this in, but I'll verbalize it now. The short option that you have, you can look to roll it sometime between 15 days or less to expiration, right? And the reason why is if the stock hasn't moved dramatically, those out-of-the-money options have basically decayed at that point about as much as they're going to. Um, and if you to, to kind of do a quick check, you can look at the delta or the bid ask. If the delta is right around five percent, the bid ask is no bid at a nickel, no bid at ten cents. You should have been rolling these things. The other thing is, is that let's say that I sold this for forty cents, I could start looking at rolling this as when it is trading at maybe twenty cents, right? In other words, I see fifty percent of the total profits I could take are acknowledged there. I could roll it, especially if I see that there's a recent pop in ball. I could roll it and take advantage of that, not only get the excess time premium, right? Uh, and I like to sell options that have about 45 to 50 days of time uh, in them. That has been the optimal. I mean, I've talked about that uh, ad nauseum for, you know, the last eight years uh, about as far as uh, strike selection. And the option that you're going to be rolling to is going to have um, roughly around a 20 delta, which again keeps me in that uh, that option that I'm selling at around one standard deviation. You might ask, well, what about the option you're buying? I typically the option I'm buying, just so you know, is kind of like one of those rules of thumb. I'm looking at basically around a 70, 75, or 80 delta option. Yes, I'm going to be paying a little bit more, but in this environment where implied volatility is low, I'm not paying a, a lot of vol for it. So if vol does pop, by the way, that does help my long option, even if the market is moving um, against me a little bit. If, again, the stock does move, because we're talking about maintenance, through that short strike price, and it's going into, especially going into that expiration, you know, less than 15 days, 10 days, 5 days, you could look to take the whole position off, especially if it's moved dramatically. That's where I take it off. Um, my micron example where I took it off, the stock went to 32. Uh, I was short the 29 strike. Now, of course, I was long the in the money January options, but in one month, the stock went, when I initiated, it was at 25, and it was trading at 32, right? The stock was, was up almost 30% in like three and a half weeks. Uh, that's astronomical. You, you just don't see stocks moving like that in that period of time. So giving you kind of a real life example of how we approached it. And again, if the stock is driven too far to the upside with one of these, in other words, there's some material thing. Uh, a binary event like earnings, something comes out really negative about the company, so the fundamentals have changed. That's going to change the perspective on the stock. That's when, you, or, or something positive comes out where, you know, like BlackBerry, for example, all of a sudden they're like, oh, you know, all this good stuff, they're going to sell more handsets, there could be a deal in the making, blah, blah, whatever it is, all of a sudden the stock's up 15, 20%. Well, that's something that's fundamentally, if it's changed it dramatically, and especially if it's gone to up to or past your long strike, in this case, uh, the long puts, you got to look at it and say, take advantage of what's remaining in that long option. You could get out of the net position, or you definitely have to think about rolling up and potentially out 
that untested side, which is that short put that's reducing my cost basis. Well, all right, good. Well, it is now 10 minutes before time. I want to thank everybody for attending. I'm going to take a look at some of the questions as we go through, uh, and I hope that everything was working because I wasn't looking. And I'm just going to actually scroll through. Um, is you know what I know some of you. Yes, you know what, Stephen, you may think that this is um, this is pretty basic stock trading class. Bottom line in this environment is this is something that uh, everybody in this room is going to gravitate towards, especially if you've been on the short side of the market and stubborn enough. But believe me, I'm not saying that I haven't felt that this wasn't frothy, but this is about one of the only ways that I know that, A, you can be participating in the markets right now today. B, if you're looking to put on any type of short position, uh, you are not going to be shorting stock. You're not going to be buying out of the money puts because that is a recipe for disaster. And the bottom line is, is that this is what professionals, this is what money managers are looking to do. And this is about being successful. All right. Uh, and, I, and again, I want to thank everybody. And Stephen, I love the fact that, you know, yeah, it might be basic. It might be in your, in your terms, but this is the way that we structure it as professionals. So uh, I appreciate your comments, though. I'm going to scroll back up. Um, there's a ton of questions. So, uh, would an insurance product qualify as a derivative? It it depends. If you're doing annuities, that could. JC, um, it 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 depends. Uh, but typically, uh, most most insurance products are not going to be considered a derivative. Okay. Um, you keep seeing a pop up. I'm sorry, Christian, if there are problems. What is the leap strike price in, at, or out of the money? Chuck was asking. It is in the money. The long term option is going to be in the money. We're using it as a proxy. Okay. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be recorded. Kevin can answer that in the chat box for you guys. I think it is reported. Um, okay, I'm not seeing any more. Let me just go to the chat. No, nope, there's nothing there. Uh, how are these options treated uh, as far as profits and losses? Uh, that's coming from Lou. Lou, I would refer to your, your tax advisor, but uh, just as an armchair, the options that you're selling in the front month are going to be short term. And um, now these are called leaps. These are long term equity anticipation products, and they're actually listed as securities. Uh, but again, I would uh, talk to your tax accountant about how you want to treat that, but you could get long term tax treatment for those potentially. Um, for trading block and money block, we're a broker dealer. Our commissions are seven ninety five uh, and seventy five cents a contract. As a matter of fact, um, we also have an opportunity, and I'm going to bring up this. We have an opportunity here that if you sign up with TradeSpoon and you want to do one of their services, specifically the Elite service, we can actually auto trade this. We also at uh, Trading Block we have virtual trade, so the actual positions that we're talking about. As a matter of fact, I'm taking a quick look at the market. Spiders are down a little bit. Uh, bonds are down a little bit. Um, and you know what? I'm going to actually bring up lots. So there's a bunch of questions. Uh, we always are doing a ton of webinars. We appreciate doing them on a Friday with everybody here and uh, with this group. So we appreciate it. We do have a list of recordings and so forth. If you go to Trading Block, you don't have to be a client. You can go take a look and look at our live and archived ones uh, as well as at TradeSpoon. But speaking of that, I do want to bring up Vlad Carpella. I want him to give just a little bit more insight into what Trading uh, Trading Spoon, TradeSpoon does and uh, just a little bit more background about his program. So let me, while we have some time remaining, and then I'll get back to the questions. So here you go. Hi, thank you, Joe, for a great webinar and presentation. And thanks, Kevin, for having us 
on this webinar. So I want to spend literally a couple minutes just to talk about TradeSpoon services. And basically what we do at TradeSpoon is uh, we believe in value investing. We believe in the finding undervalued stocks. And then we look at the statistical analysis and try to predict where the stock is going to be in the next 50 days. So we have these predictive analytics that looks at the historical price action and it looks at the earnings consistency and earnings momentum and assigns the stock. So Joe has talked about the watch list. We build watch list. Every day we have models that run and basically tells you what are the top 50 stocks. So if you're a paying client and you go to TradeSpoon, you can see this list on a daily basis. We have a long-term rating, as I explained before, where based on the discounted cash flow, based on the technical analysis and fundamentals, we are assigned 1 through 10 for each of the stocks. And 10 means that we're very, we have a very bullish bias for this stock, such as AT, URI, PNC, and Apple. Then we use proprietary quant models to predict where the stock is going to be in the next 50 days. And here you can see Apple, PNC, and URI are the best candidates. So if anything, you know, we encourage you to go to TradeSpoon and take us on this trial to build the watch list and to find what are the optimal stocks to buy that will be either higher or lower in the next 50 days. So either use the TradeSpoon or any other services, but you have to have a list of stocks that you are watching. And granted, you want, you might want to wait for a pullback in the market and get it at a better price level, but you want to construct your watch list and watch anywhere from 10 to 20 stocks. Once you see that the, the optimal entry point for the stock, you can actually you know, click on these stocks. And this is what we do at TradeSpoon once we find the long-term trend and short-term probability of where stock is going to be in the next 50 days, we provide with a daily or weekly recommendation. Now that's kind of the special offer for everybody who on this webinar. We provide either premium portfolio or elite portfolio. Premium every day out of the top 50 stocks or bottom 50 stocks, we provide you with a trade idea. We tell you specific stock to buy or sell and we tell you option strategy or option spread strategy. For elite service, we provide you with one recommendation a week. So here, URI was a recommendation on June 23rd. We can see how the URI has done since June 23rd. It's been an uptrend. We provide you with stock recommendation, option recommendation, and option spread recommendation. Uh, you can look at our performance. Someone actually asked, what is the expected uh, return? We, uh, our goal on average for every single trade that we have done, and we are completely transparent, I encourage you to look at our performance, we record every single trade. We've been averaging 22.5% return per trade. That means if you do every single trade, you know, you might you will double your money in the next 12 months. Uh, our time horizon is 50 days. That's kind of our sweet spot, and that's where all of our models are running. And we provide you both long and short recommendation. For elite performance, we only do one recommendation a week for somebody who trades less often, only has you know four to five positions uh, at any given time. So if anything, you know, one thing that I do encourage everybody to start thinking about if you're in the market and you're trading, one is you need to know which stocks to buy or sell. You have to have that watch list. The second step in value in, with investing like Warren Buffett or Benjamin Graham is that once you find the underappreciated assets, what is the optimal time entry? So you need to, the second step in the trading process, you need to figure out the timing, whether you're using the technical analysis or you, you're looking at the S&P or you have some quant models that run, you have to say, at what time do I enter position and when do you get out? So, and the third step of the process is you gotta look at the probability of the success and return on capital. You can take a trades that are high, have a high probability of success, 90%. You can sell out of the money options and a lot of services do that. And there's 90% return uh, success on this trade, but there's only 10% return on capital. So between the return on capital and probability of success, which we show for every single trade that we make and every recommendation that we make, these are the two levers that you can use. If your probability of success is much higher, your return on capital is much smaller because you're taking a lot more risk if the 
trade goes against you. So our sweet spot is that we're looking for return on capital for 73%. In the next 30 days, we're looking for 30, 73% return on capital, and we're looking for probability of success being anywhere from 55 to 65% of return on the money. That means if IV rank is high, and we're in that upper 50% quadrant, uh, we're selling the premium. That means historically, the IV is high. If the IV is low, then we are buying the spreads, and that's kind of been our strategy. So, you know, for everybody who's on this webinar, we're going to send a special promotion. Uh, usually, our, if you go to Tradespoon Deal, Tradespoon Deal, okay, and maybe you can put it in the chat room, Tradespoon Deal. Uh, our regular price is $299 a quarter, and for everybody who attended this webinar, we're giving a 34% discount. That means you only pay $197 a quarter, and in addition, you only get in you only have to pay one dollar for the next 14 days. So you can, if you're in the market and you trade and you want to build a watch list, and you want to check us out, our predictive analytics that predict where the stock is going to be, you know, it's no brainer. Try it out for one dollar. You can try the service if you don't like it or it doesn't fit your trading style. You know, you only lose a dollar. And if you do decide that there's this valuable service or research, then you know, it's only 197 dollars after that. Uh, and I'm going to turn back to Joe. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Vlad. And I, I think we're up on time, uh, Kevin. Um, you know, there are, there are still quite a few accounts. There are a couple of questions. Uh, how big must your account be? Uh, that's really, we've always looked at it. Vlad and I have known each other for about 15 years. We were, at, we, we were there, started Options Express. Uh, we all basically lived almost in the same neighborhood, uh, literally and figuratively. But uh, we figure ten thousand dollars is really where you're going to be. Uh, that's the sweet spot. So um, that's where I definitely would suggest that you uh, can look at that. But again, you can participate at a lot of different levels. All right. Well, I think, and if there are any questions or considerations, you can always hit me up at uh, support. Again, like I said, if you are looking for an advisor, please reach out to me. I use these strategies and others uh, to comprise and compose uh, structured uh, portfolios. And I can also uh, advise as well at support at moneyblock.com. Just say, hey, Joe, I'd like to talk to you. If you're looking for a new home, you can go to support at tradingblock.com if you have any questions on our retail side. So with that being said, I know I've gone over by two minutes, so I don't want to steal the other speaker's time, but I want to thank everybody so much for participating. Also, if you have any questions for Vlad and Tradespoon, info at tradespoon.com, info at tradespoon.com. All right, Kevin, I think i got to hand it over to you, don't I? Yep. Thank you so much, Joe and Vlad. Um, that's definitely going to be a replay we're going to want to rewatch. Uh, thanks again, guys, for uh, joining us. Special shout-out to uh, Tradespoon.